Greetings exiles, and this is the final part of my Bleed Bow Gladiator journey. Let's start with your favorite intro. Too much bad luck. I don't like this. Unexpected, but it's a good sign. Luck is still with me. And here's my endgame amulet. Yoink. In last week's episode, I found this bad boy. Now let's find the rest of the cards. Nice. Very good. Wow. It's a double. Well-deserved reward. But the game decided it wasn't enough. The second mage blood. And honestly, I don't even know what to tell you. It's too much, even for me. But mage blood is not for heroes, and I don't need it. So let's put it aside because I need to make some serious upgrades for this build. I'll start with the Parandus Pact. A very good jewel. Another good jewel. Thanks. So much value. A new ring. Warlord Base and Harvest Reforge. Just what I need. Not the best, but it's a good starting point. New boots. Let's start with the Necropolis. Nice base. Essence spam. Good. Benchcraft life. And now time for an Eldritch Implicit. Now I have 100% avoid being shocked and in combination with this jewel I get elemental ailment immunity. Gloves. Taking the base from the last video. It didn't work. The old and proven chaos spam. Always works. Now I need a new helmet. Let's go to Necropolis again. I need a good base for crafting. Nice. And Chaos Spam again. Well, why not? If it works. Sometimes lucky. Suffixes can't be changed and Chaos Reforge with Harvest Craft. And of course T1 Chaos Resistance. Did anyone doubt? This helmet is beautiful and my luck is disgusting. Sorry. As you can see in this video, I made a lot of new gear and thus greatly boost this build. With crafting I'm done and now it's time to get back to my favorite magic find because I need this armor. While you are enjoying the gameplay with Luck Drop, I would like to answer one question that I am often asked by my viewers. How to find a good Venter's Gamble for Magic find in SSF? Here's a little guide for you. Like this. Or like this. But seriously, I don't know. It's just some kind of magic. Finally. With this armor, glorious vanity, and divine flesh, I will have a good defense layer. Now all the gear is ready, and I can replace my old items with new ones and see what this build can do. Very cool. But before I move on to serious content, I still need to make a few more improvements. For starters, I need catalysts. Unexpectedly. But free divines are always a good thing. 
I am done with Ultimatum. Not the most fun content. I also need essences for my crafting project. While I've been collecting catalysts and essences, I've accumulated some corpses, and let's try to make a new quiver. This looks like an upgrade. I love Necropolis crafting. In this build variant, I have a very big problem with intelligence. My character is too dumb, so I need a new ring and will have to give up the Warlord's ring with vulnerability on hit. Sag, ideally for this build I need a ring with vulnerability curse on hit because we have big problems with free gem sockets because we have two main skills. If I had a good ring I would remove the vulnerability gem and could add a culling strike support gem in my mana forged arrow setup or add a war banner. But it's very difficult to do that on SSF. As always, let's go to the necropolis. Let's start with the base for the ring. Bad ring. Very good base. Necropolis is very annoying but very strong for crafting. Essence spam. Nice. Now suffixes can't be changed. Oh no. I'm out of divine orbs. Let's fix that. Easy. Back to crafting. Not bad. Benchcraft. And Lucky Exalted Slam. Sorry, I meant Unlucky Exalted Slam. Whatever. After I fixed the attribute problems, I was able to add a medium cluster. And some nodes with life. Let's go to the temple, see if we can't get some good stuff in there. Nope. And miss again. Not today. That's it for sure. I'm ready for T17 maps. I just saved up some of those maps. And of course some uber bosses. I think I have improved this build quite well and with all this gear we can easily farm T17 maps with back to basics. We have no particular problems with survivability, and if you play carefully, roll your maps and you will have no problems. Also, our explosions carry this build very hard. But to tell the truth, split arrow damage is not enough and map clearing on T17 maps is not very fast. But the main problem here is that this is a solo self-found league and for example in trade I could buy some inexpensive items and significantly increase split arrows damage. But if you remember the fact that this is SSF and the worst ascendancy in the game, it's not so bad and I'm personally very happy with this build. As for T17 bosses without back to basics is a joke. But with back to basics everything becomes a bit more difficult. But again you should not have any special problems. Depending on map modifiers you will be able to kill bosses deathless. And with hard map modifiers you may need a few portals, but it all depends on your skill. Although Fortress Boss is very easy and there are never any problems with it.
The yolk. Nice. Nice bait GGG. Very funny. T17 content is dealt with. Let's move on to Uber bosses. Not the best build for killing Uber bosses on SSF, but it can do some things. Amazing loot. A few portals and the Searing Exarch is defeated. Cool Jewel. This loot from Uber Bosses is nuts. It's worth the effort. For sure. Just kidding. It's trash. Personally, I'm not a fan of killing Uber Bosses on SSF because it's very useless in my humble opinion. And I was just curious to test the build against some Uber Bosses. To see its damage and defense. Just for science. And it's time to get back to my favorite content. And my favorite sounds. Just what I need. When I started this journey, I wanted to do a build with the Ralakesh's boots and this belt. But unfortunately, I couldn't find these boots. Since I found the mage blood, I had an idea to do a build with this belt and the melding of the flesh. But unfortunately, it is a very rare drop. One for 50 kills of the Eater of Worlds, and that's too much boring content for me. The same is true for the Adorned. So it's a skip for me. And as I think the current version of Bleed Bow Gladiator turned out pretty strong too. Well, I think that's the end of my adventure. It was really fun and interesting, and I want to try Bleed Bow Gladiator in the Trade League, but that's a story for the next league. So I'll be saying goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thank you all for watching and commenting. I appreciate it. Also, I will be very grateful for your likes and subscriptions. Bye everyone and see you in new videos.